Hey guys and welcome back. So this is the preview and I used a, a value of separation of 0 0.04 and the reason for that is 0 0.025 was uh, running out of memory using 64 gigabytes and it's not that we couldn't sim this with 64 memory, it's because this node is not allowing us to do any in-between caches. So it's doing so many things that it requires a lot of memory for it to fit all the steps together but if we were if we had access to break it down into individual steps that we can control and fine-tune the settings then we should be able to uh, sim this or uh, sorry mesh this using a lot less memory and I think the result is okay we're gonna uh, see a comparison later of the entire uh, fluid using this method and the one we're going to create now and we're going to try and squeeze out pretty much as much details as we can out of this uh, out of the sim and uh, I can instead of having to explain why we're going to do the custom meshing I'm going to build the scene I'm going to build the workflow and then you guys will see all the benefits and extra controls that we have and then uh, we're also going to compare the visual results uh, later. So what, what I want to do now is isolate this, uh, isolate the cache, the particles from the fluid to start with. So I'm going to say at name equals surface and at name equal val and this is going to leave me with the uh, points only so here we have points only and here we have VDBs and, and everything. So I'm going to call this points and I'm going to create a point here. I'm going to copy this and say delete non-selected and that's going to be our surface field and the, the, uh, the velocity. Cool. So let's unpack the points because they are packed right now. Not unpack, but unpack points. And the first thing we want to do is uh, we want to delete the droplets. But let's first create some visualization for this. I'm going to use a particle fluid surface to get the and, and use particle mode. Set this to velocity, and it's going to give us some coloration. Cool. So let's put down a blast node and delete anything where the droplet value is higher than 0 0.3. It's a point attribute and now we have this and this is what we want to mesh. Okay, now I'm going to use a VDB from particle fluid and this is what's been used inside this node as well. So not a huge difference there. I'm going to set this to 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 1.5 and 0.85. And let's wait for it to cook. And this is pretty much all that is needed for the uh, for the conversion to convert points into VDB and then into a mesh. This is pretty much all everything needed uh, to get a preview. And it doesn't use a lot of memory. It's just that there is a lot of overhead in that node that we're gonna get rid of. So let's wait for this to finish. Cool. So. The main issue with this is that we don't have any closed domain. See, so we're just getting all of this. And we need to have uh, nice boundaries for this so that later we can extend them and we can, let me convert this into a, a volume, uh, into a geometry. So as you can see here, we don't have a very good boundaries and we want to fix that. We want to have an enclosed space and then once we have that, we can delete anything beyond and clip it to get nice flat edges. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the surface field. They're both invisible right now, but that's fine. I'm going to isolate the surface field by itself at name equals surface and <coughs> pardon me delete non-selected and then I'm going to use VDB 
PDB convert and convert this into a polygon. And this is the SDF, this is the surface converted into a mesh. And see how fast it is. And we talked about this method being the best uh, way to visualize the sim. And what we want to do from this, we want to get this information. See all this boundary? We want to, we want that. And, uh, but if we combine it now with the other sim, it's going to add a lot of details that we don't want. So the idea is we want to erode this. So VDB erode, VDB, let me remember, VDB reshape SDF. So we want to reshape this SDF. And I'm going to use, I'm going to erode this by 2.2 voxels. And let's com uh, copy this and convert it and compare the two meshes. So look now, we eroded out all the details. Basically, we shrunk, pushed the voxels in. If I set this back to NC, it's going up. And if I set this to zero, this is the original. If I set this to 2.2, it's, it's going inside the volume. And this is a node. Uh, this is not going to intersect with our uh, SDF from the points. Okay, this is also an SDF. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a VDB combine and combine both SDFs. So this one and this one. And I'm going to use, I'm going to set this to SDF union. And now it's going to combine both of them nicely. Cool. So the next thing we want to do is we want to do one more thing with the with the reshape. Sometimes when we do this, when this happens, we get individual VDBs like this one, for example. We get bits floating like that, like this and this. We don't want that. We want to isolate only the core of the sim. And there is a very handy node uh, with VDB called VDB segment by connectivity. And if we connect that, take a look now. It's changing. It's changing the color of things, and the core is red, and everything else has different color. And the main fluid is still. If we look now, it, it's adding multiple surfaces. The main one is kept at surface underscore zero, and then all the new bits are uh, named differently. So we can just say blast. We can isolate at name equal surface underscore zero and delete non-selected. Now we have the core and so we're going to combine with this instead. Okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the resolution here and let's see let's see what happened. I'm going to keep an eye on the memory. So it's still, I think the cache is filled out from <clears throat> the previous node. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit escape, save, and then I'm going to restart Houdini now, and then we'll continue because the memory needs to go down. Uh, there's nothing right now happening and it needs to go down. So let me pause for a second. So I restarted Houdini and ran the same scene again, and it only occupied 20 gigabytes of memory. So we're at much better state now. So let's convert this into a mesh. And see what we have. Cool. So that's our mesh and we're getting a lot of cool details. Okay, so now we want to do something else. We want to add the smoothing uh, of the geometry 
or of the SCFs based on velocity. And from week two, we did this using points, but we're gonna do it differently this time. And we're gonna copy this node and say delete non selected. And I'm gonna operate on the vel on the velocity field. And again, it's not visible right now, but that's not a problem. Uh, we have the velocity field, it's stored here, and we want to use the length of the velocity field and based on the length, create a mask. So with volumes, it's different. Um, working with volume is different than points. And most of the things that we want to do with volumes can be done using uh, VDB nodes. And I'm gonna use a node called VDB analysis. And what this node allows us to do is multiple operations. One of them is to compute the length of a vector. So here it says length, it's gonna convert, it needs a vector and it's gonna, uh, change it to a scale, give us back a scalar. So if we do that, now this is a scalar and it's rep a, this representing the magnitude of the velocity field. So what we can do now is use a volume VOP and dive inside and then bind import the vel field. I, I don't need all of this. And I'm gonna copy this and say, use this node to export. And I'm going to use a fit range. And let's connect this. I'm going to say from zero, uh, from zero to 10, I'm going to set this to, well, we can, we can take a look at, but basically we're going to create a mask. And let me check the original value. So 0.5 here and 0.75 here. So anything that is moving between in this range, it's gonna be captured, okay? So this is our first mask. Then we have something else. We have the vorticity. And what the vorticity is, it's the curl of the velocity field. And this curl information can be computed using a VDB analysis as well. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna call this length of vel. And I'm gonna call this curl of vel. And here I'm gonna change it to curl. And this is this takes a vector and then it exports a vector. So it takes the velocity field and it gives us back a curl vector. And then from this, we need uh, to compute the length of this curl vector because this is a vector. We want to compute the magnitude of that. So I'm gonna create a VDB analysis again. And this time I'm gonna say compute length. And now we're computing the length of the curl vector and this is what the vorticity is it's the length of the curl of the velocity field or the velocity attribute i'm going to copy this and let's dive inside i'm going to call this uh, what's the name yeah it's still called vel so let's see how this looks like and because it's a vorticity so the range is different and i'm gonna change it let's set this to three and then 3.5 and so this is anything that has a vorticity of from three to 3.5, okay? And then I want to combine these two using a volume mix node, or we could do a VDB combine as well. Both works. So that's the first, and this is the second. And I'm gonna set this to add, so the mask is a combination of both results and the last thing we want to do is we want to create a VDB smooth node and we want to smooth the SDF using this mask and the way to do that is inside the VDB smooth there is a second input called optional VDB alpha and this expects a vector a scalar field like this it needs a mask like this, not a vector. It needs a, f a float. And even though the name here is confusing, but that's because I didn't want to change it. Um, we're providing this node a mask now. So let's set a few things. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disable cooking for a moment. I'm going to set this to Gaussian. 
I'm going to set this to 2 and 2. And this mask that we have is actually the areas that are moving fast or have high vorticity. And we don't want this. We want to keep these. We want to invert this mask and apply the smooth to everywhere else. And so inside this node, there is invert alpha mask. And if we take a look now. It should keep all these areas intact and only smooth out the area outside the volume. So let's uh, let's compare this with this. I see now it smoothed out all this part and left everything here as it is. Cool, so let's convert this into a mesh just so we can see. But I want to cache this just in case it crashes. Cache SDF temp. I'm going to hit save. And now this is what I was talking about, about the memory. <clears throat> if all the steps needs 30 gigabytes of memory, we will do that and save the cache. And then later we can reopen, close Houdini, clear out the memory, and then reopen again and just load the cache. So we don't have to recompute any of that. And then we can continue working. So at this point, we'll start with uh, zero gigabyte memory used by Houdini. And then we can do the, the heavier parts, which is converting this into a mesh, for example, which takes m uh, a lot of memory. So that's how you break it down and then just do one step at a time. And this is our first mesh. We still have a few things to fix, but we'll take care of that in a bit. And this is all the resolution that we have. Cool. So we can do a quick peek, for example. to add, to peek this uh, geometry. Let's see how that looks. And this is a uh, point fob, so it shouldn't take too long. It's too high, let's try point zero two. Maybe one, yeah, something like that just to remove a little bit of uh, roundiness and all of this. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, this. We're going to continue uh, working on this and improving the domain and then extending it so we can easily blend it with the ocean. We'll do that in the next video.